Welcome to Who Moves You with Mike Montague. Our guest today is joining us from warm and sunny Laguna Beach, south of Los Angeles, California. Today's guest ran a successful real estate brokerage firm in Barrie for a number of years before he traded it all in for the warmer climes and a vice presidential role with First Team Real Estate, one of Southern California's top real estate firms. He is also the executive vice president of title sales with Western Resources Title Company in California. Welcome, Terry LeClaire, and thank you for joining us today. Hey, Michael. Nice to see you, my friend. Nice to see you. Yeah, and how's life treating you these days, Terry? You know what? When you have uh, blue skies and 70 to 80 degree weather every day, how can you complain, right? And I don't mean to rub that in, trust me. But, yeah, um, yeah. It's definitely a lifestyle, and uh, it, it definitely helps you get out of bed every day and keep you active and uh, keep your keep your head in the right game. So I'm, well, yeah. uh, I'm really enjoying it down here. It's nice when you don't have to dress warmly just to go out for a walk, that's for sure. How many years now has it been since you've moved to the West Coast? You know, I left Barrie, I was thinking about this the other day, I left Barrie six years ago, and it's just amazing how time has flown by. Um, yeah. Yeah, for six years. It does. Yeah. Um, are, are there moments you actually miss blowing a foot of snow out of the driveway or scraping an inch of ice off the windshield? <laughs> You know, um, there are moments I miss the snow, believe it or not. And I, I, I can't even mm-hmm. believe I'm saying that because I, I think I've gone or I went for like four years without seeing a speck of snow. But I'll tell you, I think one of the reasons why I miss it is because uh, a month ago, my wife and I got in the car with our dogs and we were going to take a trip. And, and literally, it's only an hour away to the mountains to get to the snow. The Big but Bear. Exactly. In that area. Yeah. Um, and you know, for those of you that are familiar with Southern California, a one hour drive really isn't a one hour drive. And of course we got into some traffic and there was an accident and we were on the highway for three hours and we got two thirds of the way there and we knew it was going to take another two hours to get there. So we spun around and and came home. So it was a little frustrating. So didn't see any snow this year. No. Um, And my, my first sight of snow, I was born in uh, thousand Oaks. So you're just South of LA. I was just North of LA. I was probably four or five years old first time I saw snow, and it was at Big Bear Lake. One of my earliest memories, and that's strange for a kid at four or five seeing snow for the first time. Yeah, it's beautiful down there. Our real estate market here in Ontario has been stoked by the pandemic, and demand certainly has outstripped supply in the past year and a half. And that's pushed prices upward. They're continuing upward at a greater rate than we've ever seen before. Has the West Coast market seen similar activities because of the pandemic? Yeah, very much so. Um, we're going through you know, something similar to uh, California. You know, when I was in Barrie and I had my brokerage and I was working with my agents that worked for me, um, we always talked about, uh, you know, market escalation, equity growth and so on. And I was and I used to always participate, you know, the news um, used to come to me and interview me um, from time to time. And I was very happy with the nominal growth that we saw in Barrie. You know, there were there mm-hmm. were. 20 years of nominal growth, let's call it, where we saw growth, you know, on the low side, maybe 3%, on the high side, maybe 6%. And in my opinion, that's very sustainable, right? You can have a sustainable market if you grow at that level. That's healthy. Um, The problem is everywhere in the United States right now, and I I have friends, realtors in Barrie that uh, send me listings once in a while, and I see some things that absolutely blow my mind. She sent me one the other day, that was a, a small little two-story single car garage, 1,200 square feet, um, and it went for $700,000. And I'm thinking, yeah. of, you know, um, you could be in California in you know 1,600 square feet in a nice quiet neighborhood with palm trees in your backyard and be, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes from the ocean for that same kind of price. And I, I know it's not making sense, but the same thing is happening here, Michael. Um, you know, the the pricing is, is driven up. Uh, tremendously in the last uh, in the last plot. So you're, you're and it, it's been out of balance. I, I I mean the big root of the problem here is we just haven't been building houses fast enough to keep up with the the immigration. We get a million new people every four years in Canada, and and uh, most of them land in the GTA. That's driving people out of the GTA to you know go within an hour of Toronto. So Barry's a target uh, destination. Um, you've seen a lot of residential growth in California. Have you not? Is that yeah, high or? You know what? No, it's actually c- quite the opposite. Um, okay. California is it's an interesting state uh, for a, a number of reasons. We do things a little differently down here, but one of the 
problems with California, quite frankly, is the fact that it's so litigious. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, a lot of people suing other people. It's very litigious, but also the um, you know we have obviously earthquakes, we have water issues with with, with regards to the ocean and so on. So they're very careful in their building permits, their allotments, um, and, yeah. and you know, the red tape that it takes to build a property. And it, it's almost driving builders out of build affordably. And, and then the lack of, of actual land. Like Toronto, California sees an influx of people wanting to move here, right? Immigration and people from mm -hmm. other states wanting to, to move to California. And, and we're just Chasing running the out dream. Of yeah. And we're just running out of space. And uh, yeah. that's the challenge because a lot of people don't realize, but California, a lot of it's desert. You know, a lot of it's very hilly and, you know, you can't build on it. And, uh, and then the areas that aren't hilly, you know, they have floodplain issues and so on. So there are a lot of issues with regards to building. Yeah. Let us not forget uh, mudslides and forest fires too there, Terry, <laughs> which exactly. are all kidding aside, forest fires have been a serious issue in Southern California. And, uh, and that limits where we're going to be able to, or where you're going to be able to, to build in the future for sure. So it's a, it's a similar situation there that the population grows faster than the houses are being built and that drives the prices up. Let me give you a Honestly, stat. I don't mean to interrupt yeah. you, but let me give you a stat. Sure, no, go ahead. That I heard the other day. Um, so for four decades, so from like the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, there were approximately 25, 26 million homes being built in the US every year. Mm -hmm. And in the mid 2000s, that dropped to 6,000 or sorry, 6 million wow. homes from 25 to 26 million to 6 million. And that was of course due to the huge recession that they saw yeah. down here. Now, as a Canadian being in Canada, when this recession hit, it didn't affect the Canadian market hardly at all. I remember, yeah. and I can tell you the months because I remember them uh, where we saw a blip. There was like four months where we saw a blip in our marketplace, but down here it was absolutely devastating. So builders stopped building. So yeah. that, 20 million properties that weren't built that year is now coming to affect the inventory supply right now. And then mm -hmm. of course, you couple that with the biggest generational you know, con consumer coming into the marketplace now in full swing being the millennials. So you right. compound that with low, you know, low supply and now you have the perfect storm or the unperfect yes. storm. Plus low interest rates here, like in Canada, low interest rates, I think are, are, are more, um, uh, they spark more interest down here, it seems, and people are more concerned with that and they, they jump in a little bit more quickly. So our, our mortgage rates have been absolutely ridiculously low down here. So that's yeah. driven even more activity. So you got mm -hmm. all of those factors that are creating this, you know, this supply and demand yeah, issue. Yeah, not unlike what we see here. I'm going to bring it around to you a little bit here. You, uh, your track record as both an agent and a broker owner in Barrie, it was top shelf without, a, without doubt. You were doing at least a hundred deals a year, as far as I remember. And, but what was significant about that, that most people who remember you may not know, or may not think about, and especially other realtors today is that you were doing this prior to the advent of the real estate team model taking hold here. I mean, these were trades that you did all the legwork on yourself. Am I right? Yeah, I did. I, I was fortunate enough to have a great team of administrators. So I had three administrators that I was leveraging um, because mm -hmm. I owned the office. And yeah. I actually, I could have done more business if I had more time or I wanted to spend more time at it, but I, I did um, give off a lot of leads to my agents that were working for me mm -hmm. as well. But I had a great yeah. team, I, just amazing team. Have you seen significant differences in how the business of real estate is conducted here in Ontario versus there in California? Yeah, I was managing the you know, the 25 offices and the 2,500 agents and the 26 managers. So I was okay. the operation, but that said, I was in the field to the, to the regard that I was actually doing training um, in the offices. And I was, I was showing up to offices mm -hmm. on a weekly basis, you know, for their office meetings and doing trainings. And uh, I was very heavily involved. Actually, I was the project lead to implement our new web strategy, our new CRM uh, strategy into the company. Right. Uh, I was very involved in the technology side as well, because one thing that we didn't talk about was back in the day when I had my real estate company, I also started mm -hmm. a software company, a real estate yeah, so software I recall. company. So, uh, and, and because I trained and, and I was speaking a lot across Canada and the U.S. during that time, mm -hmm. um, it kind of fit well for my role here at the company. So uh, I did see, I do see every day what, what's happening in the field with, with the realtors. 
mm -hmm. um, the agents. And I will tell you that there really is not a lot of uh, differentiation between, you know, an Ontario or Canadian realtor versus, uh, you know, the U.S. realtor. Where the, where the differences are, I guess, is here it's, and it's everywhere it's competitive, right? We know that there's a competitive marketplace. I don't know how many, if there's a thousand realtors uh, in Barrie now, uh, maybe over a thousand realtors in Barrie. I don't know what that number is, you know, but yeah, I think- about 1,100 now. Yeah. Is it, wow, it's crazy. Um, but again, per capita, you'd have to break that down. I, I would mm -hmm. assume that per capita, there's probably more licensed realtors per capita here than there is there. But I also think that there are, bigger dominant agents that take more of the business here than there. So, I, and I know you guys have your couple dominant agents there that do a lot of business and we, we know who mm -hmm. they are, but I think the business gets spread out a little bit more there than it does here. And, you know, the other thing is the, again, going back to the litigious side of things, that's where it, there really is a difference in the U S here or in, in California specifically, you know, the disclosures, if you saw what an offer consists of here, it's, it's mind blowing. It's literally yeah. mind blowing. The, the stack of paperwork that you have to do back in Canada, you know, we could, um, you know, get an offer done in no time via fax back in the day or now with DocuSign or whatever. But here it's, re it's honestly um, very, very litigious and everybody's looking to sue everybody and, and cover mm -hmm. their butt. The other thing that's really interesting that I, that I see here a lot is especially in the, the lower to mid realtor um, segment is they are, they are doing things that, I think a lot of realtors probably wouldn't do back home or, you know, aren't asked to do. Like I see realtors like daily, you know, taking mops and buckets and, you know, going in and, you know, doing like clean outs and painting and actually cleaning oh, really? people's houses. <laughs> they're, they're doing. It's they're a doing, lot more competitive, eh? Well, and I think that's part of it, right? They're, it's yeah. a very competitive environment. So they're doing the little things that most realtors probably wouldn't want to do and, and, and nor should they really do quite frankly, you know, we want to um, keep a professional element to yeah. the business. And, well, and you're trying to set yourself apart in a competitive market. You're going to wear whatever hat you have to wear to, to stand out. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're not quite there yet. I don't think, but uh, who knows? I mean, if a thousand agents locally goes to 2000, then, Part of our listing agreement will be I'll, I'll also shovel your driveway until we get it sold. So, but you know, uh, another thing that's different here, Mike, is the fact that the closing process is a lot different, right? So, yeah, here when you when you finish a transaction, you complete a transaction, it goes into escrow, which mm -hmm. at home, you know, you put it into your attorney or your lawyer. Here it goes yeah. into an escrow company, an escrow company. Um, they have people that act like attorneys, so they basically go in and you know, dot all the I's, cross all the T's, get all the uh, the net sheets figured out um, and they bring in all the documents and then title is a big part of it because you have to get a yes. title policy and title back home is a few hundred bucks for a title policy. The attorney deals with that. You never really worry about it here. It's mm -hmm. thousands of dollars. It can be $2,500. It can be $5,000. It can be $10,000 depending on the price of the house. And again, the whole title chain is an issue. So there's always things that pop up in the title mm -hmm. chain at home. You don't deal with it goes to the attorney and you wait for your check right yeah and whatever happens behind that door you know most of us don't even know but title insurance now it, it's becoming more of a thing it's gaining traction here in ontario uh, and across canada i presume but it's it's pretty much the standard in the united states to have title insurance is it not or is it even a requirement yeah it's a requirement um to have title insurance so the, the seller has to provide a title insurance policy um, just to ensure that, you know, everything is cool and, and the buyer, they need a policy. They want a policy to make sure that they're protecting themselves. So it's something that they definitely want to. It's probably a better way to proceed, I would think. And I'm thinking I can't help thinking as I look out my window here and uh, it's it's cloudy and the trees haven't blossomed. And I know you're down there in the sunshine. Uh, aside from being able to grow lemons and avocados on your back patio, home construction in general is different. I mean, the building materials we use in Canada, they have to hold up to the climate. There's a lot of things, stucco, concrete, terracotta, a lot of different building materials you see that make for far nicer looking homes down there. Would you agree? Yeah, I'm 100%. And actually, I'm actually not even standing in my office right now. Uh, my office is at the other side of the building and I moved to a different office for this um, this little interview because they're actually outside right now, the building and they're hammering mm -hmm. and they're banging away and they're, they're spray painting the stucco. Um, but you know, the problem that we have here is termites, right? 
like this building that we're standing in has a bunch of termite rot. So they're taking off some wood, adding some new wood and, you know, uh, but for that matter, uh, it definitely is, um, there's less materials required because obviously, you know, you don't need the, the insulation requirements that you do in Canada and the, you know, the, the different types of durable yeah. materials. So like you're living right in, uh, well, not Laguna beach. You're in just next to Laguna beach. I'm just next to Laguna Beach. So I'm standing in Laguna Beach where my office is, and I'm actually right. looking at a window looking at the ocean. But I, I am three miles as the crow flies just over the canyon. So there's a beautiful canyon yep. behind me, and uh, I'm on the other side of that canyon. And, and you're pretty much almost halfway between LA to the north and San Diego to the south. When you and your wife want to go to the city, is it LA that draws you in or is it San Diego? Definitely LA. I'm more of a San Diego guy, um, but my wife is more of an LA. So we normally go to LA um, partially because we love to hike and there's a couple cool hikes around the observatory. Um, so we do the Runyon Canyon hike or something like that. And then we might grab a, a bite to eat after, um, or if we're going out for the night, uh, LA yeah. is definitely the option. And you never know who you're going to bump into up uh, hiking up in the hills in North Hollywood there. Yeah. yeah. There's a, a lot of interesting folks around. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Any celebrity I, I, encounters? You know what? Um, yeah, there's been a couple. My wife knows who they are. I don't, you know, I don't know who they are. We, we, <laughs> uh, we, we go, sometimes we go down to uh, Beverly Hills for uh, dinner and, you know, you go into some of the hotels there and you see people as you're staying there waiting for your car to be brought up. I don't know who they are. I don't, you know, celebrities don't do anything for me. I'm more about us. I'm more of a sports guy, right? I, 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 I'm more getting okay. to people, sports guys. <laughs> you bump into an athlete. Yeah. Well, Terry, I guess we should wrap it up. It certainly is great to speak with you. And it certainly is uh, great to hear that this chapter of your life is going so well for you. I'm, I'm envious and I'm happy all at the same time. And I guess anybody who's, who's moving to Ca Southern California should be giving you a call to yeah, locate a good realtor. Find somebody to look after them. We, I've got a bunch of great realtors that uh, can definitely assist. Not easy. We we're, you know, we were talking just before the podcast about, uh, you know, getting into the country and it's definitely not an easy thing to do. I have to renew my visa every three years. So fingers crossed, they let me stay. And uh, soon I'll hopefully uh, solidify that with getting a green card and, and being able to keep it here. But looking forward to getting back home. It's been too long since I've been back home to see some friends and get down to Donnelly's and uh, you know have a plate of those damn nachos that I love so much. Yeah. <laughs> those potato nachos, yes. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the patios will hopefully all be open this summer. And uh, yeah, just, I mean, it's been a lost year here. And uh, I think we're all just anxious to get to the other side of it and uh, yeah, get back no to a sense of normal. Yeah. So again, thank you, Terry. Great talking to you. You too, my friend. You take care and uh, all the best to everybody back home. Take care. Cheers.